My name is Daniel Creel, Ambassador of PinSeeker, and today we're going to be talking about Slide. So what is Slide? So Slide is going to be the movement in the golf swing that is after our transition, when we're coming down on our downswing, how much lateral movement do we have towards the target? So it's going to look something similar to this, okay? I separate Slide and Sway, which you've seen videos on our channel probably about Sway. Um, sway is going to be the movement, the lateral movement in the backswing. This is Sway. Slide is going to be like you slide into home base. That's where we're, we're putting a lot of energy into to a forward motion towards our destination and that's going to be a slide. So slide is towards the impact position. So this is something that I see a lot of instructors. There's tons of people like me on social media whether it's YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, things like that. And I see a lot of different opinions on slide. And there is a trend that's going around right now where the, these teachers want basically the golfer to pivot into this left side and just really rotate. It is very high energy. Yes, it is something that you would probably chase after if you were really looking to use ground forces a lot better um, because we're actually putting pressure into the ground rather than kind of skating above the ground with this, this slide motion. Um, but we're not all built alike. So this is where I stand on slide um, before I get into it and how I kind of teach around it. Um, I am a TPI certified instructor um, for golf, fitness, and junior. So I am very big on building a swing for an individual. And this is one of the areas in the golf swing that I think that we can actually work around the golf swing and it depends on how much slide an individual should have. But I'm also gonna remind you that I also use K-Motion or K-Vest. I use Sportsbox AI, which is an, an, basically an artificial intelligence app that both of these systems, one of them uses sensors, which is the K-Vest, that put on your body, sports boxes, we video, and it uses smart technology to quantify the movements of the body. Um, and I'm gonna say the best ball striker, strikers in the world, which is LPGA and PGA, they all slide through the impact, but the thing is, is they do it in a manner that allows them to square the face up consistently. Um, and to put it in quantity, so if let's quantify it, basically they're gonna move anywhere from three to six inches closer to the target with their lead hip. So right here, they get here and they're gonna actually move and rotate at the same time. If you just slide, that's a big no-no. We gotta get into dig into why you do that. And if you just rotate, again, in my opinion, that's a big no-no because you're gonna spin out too fast and the rest of your body gets behind and your hips have to actually stop for everything to catch up. That lateral movement or the slide movement actually times the upper body and lower body a little bit better in my opinion. So what I'm gonna do is just hop over here and use my V1 software to show you how to analyze your swing. We all have smartphones. Uh, most of you that are watching have simulators with cameras. You can go in there and I'm gonna give you a way to analyze your swing to maybe see if you need to do something a little bit different or see if you are within the tolerance level so let's go over here and check it out all right guys i am back i've got v1 set up running this is what i use when i teach my students and also i have one of my students here i'm going to show you an example where this individual doesn't slide enough um, and again this is what i see in most of my students um, is they don't slide enough the ones that slide too much typically have a restriction in their physical uh, ability to actually rotate and that's why they slide. So it's a compensation for the lack of rotation. So again, I do work on that through TPI assessments and exercises. And once we learn how to rotate and coordinate the body to rotate and get past that physical barrier, these individuals, once they rotate, will actually, it'll, it'll limit the, the amount of slide that they have. So put it to you this way, if you slide a bunch, you can't rotate because all that energy and focus is going on the slide. But if you start rotating and learning how to rotate, that slide will limit because you're actually putting a lot of focus on the, uh, the amount of rotation. Um, and what I see in most golfers is they are limited in rotation and they're limiting it in slides. So, so I've got a student here on the left and we'll jump into his swing. And you'll see he actually has a little bit of sway. So if you've watched our previous videos, which is the movement coming across that line there. But once we get to impact, you're going to notice, um, let me back track a little bit. You're going to notice I drew this line. This is what I call the imaginary wall. Um, 
it goes from the outer toe uh, to the lead shoulder on a golfer. And at impact, you want, especially with an iron, you want to break this wall with the lower body and also with the upper shoulder. With a driver, that shoulder might be in a good position right here because we do want to hit up on it. But if we're hitting down, we want to get on that left side a lot harder, um, which requires a lateral movement towards the target. I've got Adam Scott on the right, and um, I've got the same lines drawn. You can see his head stays very steady, right? Um, and I'm going to fast forward to impact, and you're going to notice how much laterally he has shifted I'm going to change colors on this. How much laterally he has shifted with upper body and lower body, but he's maintained his head centered in the circle. He did move down, but again, uh, that's a common trait. Again, the average golfer moves down towards the ball with their head uh, two to three inches. So he's within that threshold. And the reason why is because they hold a strong angle uh, with their hands and the hands are in, in front of the club, which creates an angle to the ground. So for the club to make contact, You've got to move down closer to the ball, which you can see most amateur golfers along with this, this gentleman, uh, he raises up and that's because he casts the club and he has to make room for the club. So this video is not on that. We can do that another day. But again, I want to cover this lateral forward movement. And you can see the key is, is his hips are going to break through first. So it breaks through the wall. So he's not, he's not taking a nosedive with his shoulder down because I see that in golfers as well where they will actually get to the top and they will lead with the shoulder and the shoulder breaks through uh, before the hips. And again, that, that's not a good, efficient way either. That's going to cause you to, to shut the face usually. It can cause a double miss. But again, you're going to really deal off the club and, and hit down on it and you're going to run out of loft. But you can see how his lower body leads leads the way and then his shoulder follows later and another tidbit here is his shoulder never passes his lead hip um, that's a critical piece even for your broader shouldered uh, guys out there and girls uh, we we don't want this lead shoulder to outrace or out lean the hips you can see he does good. He just doesn't have much of a lateral movement, my student over here. So, um, again, that's how you're going to diagnose it. So if you have the ability to look at your golf swing on a camera or smartphone, and you don't have to be able to draw these lines. So you can see here I have – this is a metal-sided building, and I can see – there, how much do I have to move? And it, you can see that this gentleman just comes up and kisses that, and he, he moved forward maybe an inch to two inches, but again, his upper body is really hanging back. And I'm going to show you the consequence of this and why I believe this so much. Um, so this is my pressure mat, and I'm going to move this. You can't see it there, sorry. So the pressure mat, this, this white dot is going to be my center of pressure. Um, and I'm going to reference this. This is going to be the gentleman's right foot, left foot. So again, this is the gentleman's left foot. This is his right foot. This is actual his right foot and his left foot. So it's backwards of what you see on the screen. So, um, so it's actually like how you're sitting in a chair or standing and watching this video now. It is correlated to how you're viewing it, uh, not from his view. All right, so this is the back foot. We can see as he takes the club back, that center of pressure moves to the back foot. He transitions forward, but you'll notice how that weight starts trending back to that back foot again towards impact. And this is why I'm such a big believer in incorporating a slide into the golf swing is because I want that pressure dot, this white dot up here. Once it gets to the lead foot, which would have been right here, and he's only 73% there. I would like to see it 80, 85%. Once it gets there, it needs to hang out there. It needs to stay there um, all the way through impact and uh, post impact. Um, but what happens because he doesn't have that lateral move, his tendency is to hang back on that back foot. He gets an extreme lean here. And uh, that leg even has somewhat of a, of a roundness to it because there's a lot of pressure being applied here where you can see his leg is more vertical. He still stays behind the ball, and he's kind of sliding into it with a lot of rotation, which gives Adam the ability to hit the ball the way he does. 
So when he makes contact, he has 68% of his pressure on this back foot, which again is like firing a gun. Um, if only, you know, let's see, 32% of the gunpowder went off, the bullet wouldn't travel very far. There wouldn't be much power behind it. We need to get um, that weight over to that lead side as we're making contact. So that's why I believe in the slide and that's why I think and, and teach the way I do and I get good results with it. So again, video your swing, draw the lines, see where you are. And again, if you have any questions or any comments on this, please comment below. We want to get your feedback because uh, this one is a unique uh, trade in the golf swing as not one bill fits fit, fits fits everybody. It's um, it's going to be due to your limitations and what you're capable of doing, um, and plus it has to be in the right sequence. So again, make sure you paid attention to the details uh, and how you actually come through an impact with the hips first. Okay, uh, but again, it's not just hips only. There is a rotation piece to it. So I hope you guys. Take this to the range, take this into your indoor simulator and uh, practice it and evaluate your own swing. And again, please comment below. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe the page where you can get more content uh, instructional and simulator wise. Um, and again, we need ideas. So if you guys want to see a video or have a question or want to be involved in one of our videos, make sure you list it in below or you can email us uh, at our support on our webpage at penseeker.com. So again, thank you guys for tuning in. And until next time, happy pen seeking.